Hi, I'm Zach Hill. I'm the plant records specialist and taxonomist here at Juniper Low Botanic Garden. And today we're going to talk about uh, southeastern native trilliums. So first trillium here is Trillium maculatum, the spotted trillium. Uh, this is native to South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. It's got really nice wide spatulate petals that are kind of um, oblong, wider at the tip than at the uh, base. It's found, it occurs in yellow forms, red forms, and then a bicolor form, form of simulans, which has a red base and yellow petals. It's uh, fragrant, it usually smells of bananas, so it's a really neat uh, Southeast native trillium that likes calcium. Uh, so trillium are native uh, in eastern in the eastern United States as well as the west coast of North America and there are also species native to uh, um, eastern uh, Russia and Japan and China and Taiwan as well but those are all these the pedicillate species the upright ones and they don't really like our climate here in North Carolina most of the ones we grow are native to the southeastern US uh, like Trillium fetidissimum, which is not quite blooming yet. Uh, it is native to Mississippi and Louisiana along the Mississippi River. It's one of the best growing trilliums for us as far as seed set and offsetting. Uh, most of the forms we have are based out of material from Baton Rouge, Louisiana from a rescue that Mark Rose did. Uh, that's all of our strains with Baton Rouge came from a former woodland, which is now a housing development. But we have a few others over here that we can look at some other clumps of that. Uh, and here is, this is Trillium reliquum. This Trillium was described in the mid 70s as a new species. It's on the Endangered Species Act, but not, it should not be. It was originally known from one population along the Chattahoochee River and then one population from around the Augusta, Georgia area. It's now been found across the fall line area of Georgia and into Alabama and a little bit in South Carolina. It's, it's not rare by any stretch of the imagination but it has flowers that are red to reddish green to yellow uh, and they'll be blooming in another week or so here we have one of our first trillium fetidissimum from baton rouge that are blooming for us it's called fetidissimum because their flowers are very um, stinky um, but it actually uh, is the really good one for the garden and you can see here we must have missed at least one seed pod last fall uh, because we have a lot of seedlings that we're going to need to pot up and put into production and that's how you know they're from last year because yeah they're they are uh, single leaves this is their cotyledon they usually have the seed hanging on at the tip but this was clearly one pod that hit and rotted and then they've all germinated. These are their first year leaves. So many second year leaves. The second year leaves, they start to develop the modeling as well on the leaves. And here is Trillium cuneatum, uh, this one is a, just a numbered selection that has a darker than normal olive leaf color. Uh, this, this is material out of the Oconee area of South Carolina, really wide petals. Oconee uh, has red and yellow forms, native. Um, cuneatum means wedge shaped. And you can see that the petals are actually really wide at the base and sort of narrow towards the tip. 
These are usually pretty fragrant. Uh, they smell like juicy fruit gum. So it's a really good, good trillium. So one of my favorite trilliums, this is trillium under woody eye. This is uh, Florida material. It is native to Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. Uh, this particular clone comes up in late December and is seemingly unaffected by single digit cold. Uh, it's one of our first to emerge, one of our first sessile species to bloom. Sessile meaning that there is no stem that holds the flower above the leaves here on this trillium. Now this one, it's sort of a yeasty smell, not particularly great, but the foliage variation is amazing. This, this Florida material is where the type, I believe, was described. This stuff from Alabama is a little different, a little bigger, and we have some material of it around the garden, so we can probably find some of that as well. So when I talked about Trillium cuneatum earlier, this, this is a Trillium that is undescribed as of now. Well, it's described right now. This is cuneatum. This looks nothing like the other cuneatums we've seen. This is the form that grows from about, uh, it's just north of Augusta all the way up the Savannah River drainage to um, Tacoa area in Georgia. This, it's got a narrow petals. They vary from red to brown to green to yellow. Usually have a much more open flower compared to other cuneatum. This, this particular species is much earlier to flower for us in the garden. We've been watching them for about six or seven years at this point. We'd really like to publish this as something new, but it's definitely not cuneatum. Uh, this one sort of has a yeasty stale beer scent and it attracts um, freeloader flies, which are these little flies that sit and they pollinate it. They're attracted to stinky things. They also will ignore regular cuneatum and go to this, and they also visit uh, Trillium ludovicianum, which is a species from Mississippi and Louisiana, which this is similar to, but not quite the same. So this clump of trilliums here, this is Trillium ustingii. This was only published as a new species in the mid 2000s. This is from McCormick County, South Carolina, along the um, river. Uh, it's a river in central um, South Carolina. It is, was until very recently only found in one county, but they've actually found it a little, little further south in South Carolina at another location. This species laid unknown for years in herbaria listed as trillium lancifolium now, obviously it's not quite like lancifolium when it blooms the petals are really wide and highlighter green with a brown claw-like base at on the petals and it smells like uh, shoe polish so it's a very chemical smell there's also brown forms that seed in throughout the population it doesn't seem to be truly genetic it sort of happens throughout the population that they're all black flowers uh, we've selected some out and we've actually sold them in the past but it doesn't come true from seed we can grow seeds from the purple flowered ones and we get the yellows and we grow seeds from the yellows and get the purples so there's some genetics at work that we're not sure what's going on Okay, so right here, this is Trillium pusillum, variety pusillum. This is material from Berkeley County, South Carolina. This is the first time we flowered this particular clone here. We got this from a friend in South Carolina last season, but obviously it's done well. We've got four 
plants there. You can see that it's got a short pedestal here that holds the flower up. This complex is quite variable and is actually probably about half a dozen species uh, with some having almost no pedestal at all, which are like variety Carolinianum, which is native here in Wake County and variety Virginianum, which is up in the tidewater of Virginia and Monticulum, which is up in the mountains of Virginia and um, Western North Carolina. So it's a very interesting little swamp dwelling trillium. This is Trillium discipiens. This is Lumpkin Dwarf. It's uh, one a former employee, Cliff Brock, found in uh, Lumpkin, Georgia. Trillium discipiens is related to Trillium underwoodii. It is, um, was known as Trillium discipiens. This was described at the same time that we described uh, Trillium reliquum. It, it appears like a tall underwoodii. Um, the difference is, well, there's some floral differences. It's a greener flower that's wider, but when you bend the leaf down, when it's flowering, if it's one and a half to two times the length of the leaf versus the, the stem there, it's decipiens. If the, the leaves are touching the ground or less than one and a half times longer, it is Trillium underwoodii and it was just re fairly recently within the past 50 years split out the southeast and there is still a lot more to be done with this um, there are probably a couple more species in the complex that have yet to be um, split out to make it fit a little better and here's trillium discipiens this is from Kohili creek and I believe that was Alabama or Georgia, somewhere off the Chattahoochee. This is it in flower. Um, so it's very tall. And finally, Jeremy Schmidt was able to tell the difference when we saw them in the wild uh, in 2017, 2018. He thought they were all the same. And he finally was able to say, oh, that is Decipiens. That's good Decipiens. That's not under Woody Eye. So this was good. We have a really nice underwoody eye over here I would like to show you as well. This is a mostly silver leaf form from Alabama that uh, we've had for 10 years now and it's still only a couple stems. And this would be one we'd love to offer eventually clonally but we just can't do it yet. But this is, this is a little later than the stuff we saw earlier from Florida but it's got a typical red flower with that. And while we're on the trillium with silver leaves, this is a trillium freatum. This is a hybrid from our garden here. Uh, trillium freemanii is a fairly recently published species that Tony found in the late 90s. We brought some back, started growing them from seed, found out that Trillium freemanii and Trillium cuneatum really get along in the garden a little too well, and we end up with hybrids. This is Trillium freatum. It's a silver leaf seedling, so it's intermediate between the two species. But just a really pretty plant. So here with the, under this Akuba is one of our first Trilliums to bloom. This is a Trillium maculatum, again, that we started with. This is material from Florida. This clump has been here for uh, 20, for almost 20 years, but it's just gradually offsetting. But this is some of the earlier material. The Florida stuff comes up much earlier than stuff from Alabama or Georgia or South Carolina. So we have stuff from Kanapaha in Florida that comes up in late December, at about the same time that the deer underwoody eyes come up. So, so this is another underwoody eye. This is just one of our numbered clones. This one came from, this is also the Florida material. 
Um, this is just a really, really stunning quadricolored leaf form that Tony selected out from garden, from plants in the nursery when we get them in from a uh, source in Florida. But this one uh, has been here for five years, so it's got three stems now after five years. And we've got another under Woody Eye here, some, something similar. This also looks like the Florida, yeah, this is another Florida form. It's in full bloom right now. So they're modeling, does that stay the same year after year? Yes, the, the modeling generally stays consistent from year to year. Uh, so if you find one with a pattern you like, chances are it's going to be very similar. The spots may change a little bit, but it will look pretty similar every year. So the ones that are mostly silver will remain mostly silver or solid silver. So it's, it's a trait that we found actually does remain true. Not completely. I mean, they will all come up modeled. Solid silvers have a better chance of having silver seedlings, but not 100%. So, I mean, we've got silver foliage ludovicianums that we're growing, clone, growing clonally as well as from seed and selecting the silver ones out as they mature. So it takes Tony, myself, and Bill, uh, who works in research, we sit and look at all the trilliums in the trial beds and select ones for clonal or for sales based on a leaf strain type, like a type of leaf or a flower color or a uh, locality and we'll select those and we do this every year. We'll spend several days throughout the spring season agonizing over every little trillium down there of the thousands we have. The best time to plant trilliums is really whenever you've got them. Uh, if they're flowering, you can move them. They do fine as long as you don't let the roots dry out. Uh, digging them in summer can be problematic. They generally do a couple flushes of roots a year. They're usually flushing as they're blooming or right after blooming. And then they maintain some roots throughout the summer and then they root in again late fall, early spring. So, I mean, as long as their roots stay moist and they don't dry out and you keep them adequately moist when you've planted them, you could move them at any point in time. They may look a little sad for a day or two or a week or so. Just make sure they stay pretty moist, but they'll pop right back up. And that's why all the bare root trillings are dead. Yes, that's why if you buy a little $5 bag of peat at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any of the big stores, those stored in peat are not good for, they're generally not alive. Generally, they came from somewhere in the Appalachians, dug up off of a hill, most likely out of the wild, and are not propagated by a seed because you can't sell them for the price that they are without having sacrificed something. The reason our prices are a little higher is we spend years and years growing the trilliums from seed and growing them in a pot for a few years and then lining them out and letting them mature for another four to five years to get blooms so we can make sure that they are correctly identified and not hybrids. It's not a slow process and it's not really a process that we make any money on. It's just something we do because we're absolutely insane and obsessive about it and have to collect all the seeds that are in the garden. We end up inventorying every trillium every year, uh, twice a year. The first time is when they're blooming. We'll do a bloom inventory coming up here soon. And then mid to late June, I will set another inventory of what we had bloom. Then we will go around and collect all the seed pods and sow them immediately into pots with tags and permatil and stick them under a bench in the greenhouse and then they'll germinate this in the following spring. And then we grow them a couple years and then they get lined out and the process repeats. I, I talked about, so here is a trillium uh, cuneatum oconee yellow. I talked earlier about um, one of the red forms of oconee county things. 
These are seedlings from a yellow form. We've given it the stray name Oconee Yellow just to differentiate it from several other forms of yellow trilliums. These may look like trillium luteum, but they're not. Their petals are very wedge shaped where trillium luteum would have very narrow petals and they smell, trillium luteum smells like um, Fruit Loop cereal. It's a lemony scent and this is not very lemony. It's sort of a musty scent, but definitely not trillium luteum. And trillium luteum also blooms about three or to four weeks after this one does, so it doesn't overlap much in bloom time. Uh, this is Trillium delicatum. This is a fairly recently described species of Trillium known from Georgia. This was only published about five years ago. It was thought to be the same as Trillium decumbens because it's growing along the ground, but it turned out to be a new species. Uh, it's actually related to Trillium staminium, which we will see in a little bit rather than decumbents. Um, it's very rare and it's just a really neat trillium. This is one that's been in the ground for about four years, so it's just moving a little bit, but not much. We talked about this one. Uh, here's another rare trillium. This is Trillium ustingii. This is a native to South Carolina um, in and around the Camden area. This was only described about 15 years ago. Another really restricted rare southeastern native trillium. It's got a very interesting scent. It's sort of like shoe polish. Uh, so it also sometimes occurs with a fully um, purplish flower as well, which we've sold in the past, but it's got the same color as this dark claw here at the base. This was thought to be Trillium lancifolium for years until people actually looked at the plant and said, oh wow, this is something different. Here we have a Trillium cuneatum. This is the, the population, this is from populations in the central part of North Carolina. This is the quintessential Cecil type trillium for the southeast. It's very widespread currently. Uh, it will be reduced down a little bit when other species are divided out of it. But this one actually smells like uh, juicy fruit gum. It's very fruity, sweet smelling. And on warm days in the spring, you can actually smell it from a distance. So it, it actually perfumes the forest floor um, in like Davidson County, Guilford County, Randolph County, um, and into the Uaris. So, and this one is, is one from uh, near where I grew up in Davidson County. Here we have Trillium staminium. Uh, it's the, um, one of the more interesting flowered types of trillium in the Cecil group. This is related to the de uh, delicatum that was over there. Um, its petals are held horizontally and they have a twist like an airplane pe uh, propeller. It's also interesting, the, it has a really short ovary and long stigmatic lobes that come outside of the stamens and very tall stamens compared to its ovary. And they also release their pollen to the side and outward. So slightly lateral uh, dehiscence on the pollen. This one is native in Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty interesting species of trillium. It also occurs in a yellow form. And other times it can have two to three twists per petal. So it can be really, really twisted or just slightly twisted like this one.
And we just saw Trillium cuneatum over there. This is actually an anthocyanin-free uh, yellow form of the, the normal Trillium cuneatum from the central Piedmont. And this one is still gonna smell like juicy fruit rather than the lemon scent that you would get from Ludium, which some people would think, oh, that's gotta be Trillium Ludium. You can tell it's not because it's got these big wedge-shaped petals that are wider towards the middle and go down to a clawed base. We'll actually see Ludium here in just a second to show you the difference between this and Trillium, and true Trillium Ludium. This is a clump of Trillium Ludium. Notice that the petals are very long and thin and not really wide like that cuneatum was. This one is is lemony in scent. This is from uh, Whitfield County, Georgia. This was a rescued population. This is a solid green leafed form with very few silver spots. Uh, Tony went with some of the native plant groups and did a rescue on this site that was going to be developed in 2011. And some of the selections have been here in the garden now for 13 years and we're starting to get some nice offsetting. Eventually we'd like to offer these as clonal selections of Trillium Ludium, but it's just a really, really nice plant. Here we have what, what was thought to be the same as Delicatum. This is Trillium decumbens. This is a species from Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee, much like Staminium, but this usually has a stem that has an S-shaped curve that grows along the ground. It's also distinguished because it's got a fuzzy stem here. This trillium grows horizontal decumbens, which was what, where the name came from. When, it fru when it's in fruit, it has absolutely no leaves on it at all. It completely drops all its foliage and finding the grayish brown seed pods in summer is obviously quite difficult because we've missed at least two pods last year. These are the first year seedlings from Trillium decumbens. But this is, it doesn't usually offset. This is a, a form that just does not that is offsetting quite well. We've got one right over here from the same spot that has a much larger rosette. Trillium decumbens supermax. Obviously it's never offset either, but uh, just it's just a matter of the genetics are slightly different. This one has more silver to the leaf, but also a much larger rosette. This is one of the largest plants of this species I've ever seen in the wild. Normally they're pretty small, like the uh, prior clump. In a habitat not far from where those decipians were, we found this really cute form of Trillium catesbii. This is one from uh, Haleburg, Alabama. This, this particular clone and population, they're all very small and all white and never get more than about four to five inches tall. This could possibly be something undescribed. Uh, it's got the same curve, recurved petals. This is a pedicillate species of Trillium. We've been seeing a lot of sessel species and now later in the season, we're getting into some of the pedicillate species that we wouldn't have had three or four weeks ago. This one is a really neat, uh, unfortunately not very offsetting species. This has been a single stem for four seasons at this point, but it's super cute. And one of my favorite of the cuneatum group, of the Catesbii group. While on the subject of pedicillate trilliums, this is 
uh, Trillium tex texanum. This was a form of Trillium pusillum. Up until fairly recently, it was elevated. This one is from Louisiana and Texas, maybe Arkansas, but it's not determined yet. Um, this is a fairly rare species. Um, the pusillum group as a whole are very restricted in range. This one has um, five, three to five veins per leaf and a very tall pedicel compared to say Trillium uh, pusillum variety four, which is Susan Farmer's Trillium carolinianum, which is native here in Wake County, as well as Johnston and Nash County, which has a very short pedicel. So this, was, this is the, the Texas form. This is one of our favorites. This one is really multiplying well. Um, so it's been in the ground for two years and we actually have what, six flowering stems this year. So that's actually done really well. And you can also see the difference between a sterile shoot, which are much larger leaves, compared to what's blooming, which are actually real, show real narrow. They're just trying to maximize the amount of energy they can get from each particular growth point there. So this, this is a Trillium maculatum type plant. This actually came from a population where Trillium maculatum and Trillium reliquum grow together. This one doesn't quite have the right petal shape it's very, much thicker than it would be for maculatum. Usually they're sort of very narrow petals and in a banana scent, I don't detect any scent on this one, but this one's been in the ground for four years. We're just watching it to see if it actually is a hybrid or not. It's still up for debate. So in the, in the garden, we end up with uh, trilliums hybridizing quite, quite well. This is a trillium, uh, we're calling it freatum. It's a cross between trillium freemanii and trillium cuneatum from the Oconee uh, populations out of the yellow forms. But this one actually is all an all silver leaf form that we selected out of our seed blocks. They're pollinated by small flying insects, which seem to be pretty set in who they pollinate. One fly may pollinate populations from along the Savannah River and Trillium ludovicianum from the Gulf Coastal Plain, but will skip the, cuneate, the other cuneatums. So it makes you wonder if the flies are not better botanists than, than some, some botanists actually are because they, they can tell a difference in the scent compared to what sometimes the eyes can tell you. So. Oh. Here we have one of our first of the mountain Pedicillate species. This is Trillium simile from, uh, this is from Nantahala, North Carolina, that we got from uh, Dryad Woodworks um, as a seed, as seed grown trilliums from populations in the mountains. It's got a nice dark ovary and white petals, and it should be fairly sweet scented. Uh, this is a really good uh, pedicillate species. We're just trying this out fairly recently now. So just glad to catch it on its first day open here in mid-March. Here we have a really nice colony of Trillium ludovicianum. This is uh, from the strain we call Bentley. It's from, uh, I believe it's a Louisiana collection from Caldwell Parish, I believe. Um, very narrow petals. I just noticed that I just scared off some of the freeloader flies that pollinate this particular plant. Um, this is a um, Gulf Coastal Plain species native to Louisiana and Mississippi. 
And this, Ludovisiana means from Louisiana in Latin. So this is a really nice clumping form. It does It's one of the better growers for us here in the garden. Takes normal soil, doesn't really care one way or the other as far as what soil type you have. Heavy clay to sand is perfectly fine. Here's another neat trillium. This is Trillium recurvatum. Um, this is a called the prairie trillium. It's native to the Midwest and south into Texas and Louisiana. There are a couple, there's one or two populations in North Carolina that may or may not be native. It's, it's really hard to tell um, because they're very um, scattered here in the, south, in the southeast as far as being relic populations of things. This particular one came from Nacogdoches, Texas. Um, this is a seed strain we've had. This one is a really good offsetting species. Really thin rhizomes, very brittle related to Trillium lancifolium. If you break the rhizome, it will actually make lots of new plantlets off of each piece of rhizome. So it multiplies quite well, um, but it's really nice. We actually have, most of ours are the red flowered form. We do have a few that are yellow and some that are sort of a creamy yellow as well. But the Arcadia form from Texas seems to be the best grower for us. And we are talking about trilliums, but we have a trillium cousin here. This is a Paris chinensis. This is one of Tony's collections from Taiwan that's in bloom now. These are uh, second cousins to trilliums. The petals are actually not these. These are the sepals. The petals are these tiny thread-like things that are sort of hanging down below the flower. But this is one of Trillium's first cousins. But we do fairly well with some of the Paris species. But this is just really cool to get it while the other Trilliums are blooming. This is actually the same species of Paris that we just saw. This is Paris chinensis, but this is actually the, one of the original plants that Tony collected in Taiwan. This one's been in the ground since 2008. So it shows you how big that little tiny seedling eventually will get. It will turn into like this huge, like two and a half foot tall Paris. And this is still fairly small. There are some species that actually get, you know, seven to eight feet tall. We can't grow them, unfortunately, but they're out there. This is Trillium georgianum. This is related to uh, the Trillium texanum. This is another of the pusillum group. This is a single site endemic to Whitfield County, Georgia. There's only one place in the entire world where this plant grows wild. And luckily we have these for ex situ conservation. We got these from someone who grew them from seed from that site. So it also multiplies quite well. It's a, it's a great garden plant, um, nice and short and very thin leaves and a nice peduncle. We're gonna go see its cousin from Raleigh here next. This is Trillium pusillum variety 4, uh, also known as variety carolinianum at times. This is from Nash, Johnson, and Wake counties. You see that it's got very little peduncle there. It's almost sessile, but this is one of the other species in the pusillum complex that's probably a different species than normal pusillum, but it's just a great tiny little dwarf rock garden sized trillium. Easy to grow. It normally grows in mucky soil on these little microtopographic hummocks of moss that have, you know, about six inches difference between the muck and they just 
form these huge mounds of foliage and mostly single leaves, immature leaves, they don't because they don't always bloom well in the wild. Um, actually, they bloom the best on the side of the road where they occur, where they get sun more during the day, but in the woods, they don't bloom quite as well. Just because of the shade, they don't get quite as much bang for their buck while they're up. And here's another late form of Trillium underwoodii. We talked about decipients earlier, and, and I said, you know, you could tell the difference between them as to the length of the leaves. And this one's about to open, and notice that on decipients we couldn't touch the ground. But on all of these underwoody eyes, their leaf, the leaf tips are long enough to touch the ground or nearly touch the ground, and they're about the same length as the stem. This one is a population from um, uh, eastern, southeastern Alabama. So it's a good population. Trillium regalii is almost there in bloom. This is a another pedicillate species. This one is the southern nodding trillium. These buds will go down below and have these beautiful white flowers with extremely recurved back petals with sort of a white to rosy colored stigma and anthers and a a rose scent if you can smell it. Um, some people can. I myself cannot detect any odor from this species even when people standing next to me are saying, oh my god you can't smell this plant. It's the one drawback that I just I've never been able to experience the scent of this particular trillium. But it's a great garden plant. This one is offsetting. It's been in the ground for about 10 years and it's got about eight or nine stems from a single rhizome. So it's, it's slow to multiply, but it's actually doing quite well in the garden. Uh, this, is, this is what Jane Lampley treated as Trillium freemanii. This was not what Tony and we had been calling freemanii at the time, but since she published it, this is this would be typical freemanii from her publication. This is a species from northeastern Alabama in northwestern Georgia. It's got a sort of a yeasty beer scent. We norm we were listing these as a cuneatum form for a long time, but this particular, the populations up along the Tennessee border with Alabama, a range from green to reds to bicolors all across the board, but a really neat, this is a nice particular specimen of this. Earlier we looked at Ustingii. This is what it does once it's happy in the garden. It forms quite large colonies uh, with you know, some narrower petaled forms and some wider petaled forms. But this is a really great southeastern native trillium. In that same population, when Tony visited, he found one of the first Unilliums known. It's a mutant trillium that never blooms and it just has a single leaf and just offsets tremendously, but never blooms. We've now found two uh, uniliums out in the wild. Uh, this one is solitary man. This is the Eustingii form. We also have a form of Ludovicianum that we got from uh, Jake and Ella Price, that we call Priceless. It has a slightly larger leaf than this, but it's never going to do any more than this, maybe a little bigger. The original colony is still out in the woods. Divisions were taken, but this is actually a single clone. And it's just weird. So here's another form of Trillium cuneatum. These are solid silver forms that uh, came from my great aunt's property in Davidson County. Um, that my dad found and, and allowed us to 
get divisions. We have two different clones of solid silvers. When, when I dug the plant up, it had a rhizome that was about eight or nine inches long. So it had been there for quite a long time, but it, the whole woods are just completely filled with, with thousands of trillium cuneatums. And it just so happened that there were some silvers that we were able to bring into cultivation and grow and collect seeds from and try to have a silver leaf seed strain eventually. So you might eventually see these for sale in the catalog. So this trillium, this is Trillium Cecily, the one of the first trilliums named by Linnaeus uh, in the 1700s. This was the first of the Cecil trilliums. Um, this is a population from, this is from the North Carolina population. It's barely found here in the state, up in the northeast corner of the state, um, along the Roanoke River. And this is um, some that Tony found uh, right after the tornadoes went right through the middle of the Roanoke Rapids area that same day. But it offsets quite well in the garden. Uh, this is, you know, been here for 12 or so years. Uh, but it has a really long anther connective at the tip, a couple millimeters long that differentiates it from all the other Cecil group. But it's, it's the type for Cecil trilliums. And for a long time, everything in, everything that was Cecil was listed as Trillium Cecily. So the 40 some species that are in the subgenus Cecilium were all under Trillium Cecily at one point, way back in the past. It's a great plant. We grew it from seed. It, it's one of the first to ripen in the spring or in the summer. So we get lots of seeds from it and the ants love it too. A dark flowered form of Trillium stingii, like I mentioned earlier. So notice that this one has all dark pigment or mostly all dark pigment compared to the green with the purple base of the typical forms of Ustingii. So sometimes we have Trilliums that we have no idea who they cross with. This came out of a uh, Trillium fetidissimum block. It's much larger than normal fetidissimum. It probably hybridized with like cuneatum or maculatum, judging by the petal shape. Um, but it's much larger than normal. The pattern's different. The, the bugs create all these interesting hybrids for us here in the garden. And growing thousands from seed, we end up finding lots of seedlings that don't quite match what the books say they should look like. So, Since we've looked at some other Trillium ludium and Forma ludium, this is a Trillium maculatum Forma ludium that came from Georgia. This is from uh, Washington County, Georgia. This is the uh, yellow form of Trillium maculatum. It's nice wide petals, nice creamy yellow and offsetting a bit at this point. Notice it's got very little red pigment. There's only a tiny bit on some of the anthers at, towards the base, but primarily the entire plant is lacking in the red pigment. Behind us is another form that's almost like Forma simulans here from the same county. This is the same population that this one came from. But notice it's got just a tiny bit of red, which has been called Forma simulans in the past. It's a really great trillium. We looked at yellow maculatum. This is a form from central Georgia with very narrow petals. This is growing with trillium delicatum. So this is just a nice red tall form that uh, came from central Georgia. There's another one here. Much, much narrower than the stuff from Washington County. This is another 
You ready? Uh, this is another new species. This is Trillium radiatum. This was split from cuneatum by Jane Lampley in 22. Th these are from uh, northeastern Alabama and into some Georgia. They're generally uh, sort of pubescent or scurfy stemmed up towards the top. So there's some hair on the stem and the petals are a little different shape and there were some differences in the anther connectives and the uh, stamen and things. Um, but this was, these are from um, Alabama. So sometimes we end up with hybrids that are really, really big. This is a freeatum again. Tony put the name, I'll be damned on it because it was so big. But this is just a very large ruffled leaf form of Freemania cross with uh, cuneatum. So it's got the slightly um, cuneate petals, the wide and down to a clawed base. But it's a really interesting one. I'm sure this is one that he will want to release clonally eventually. So just a really nice dark foliaged Trillium cuneatum hybrid.